Hi everyone. Today we're going to be uh, learning how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. This is the third method that we've learned so far for solving quadratic equations. The first uh, method, remember, was graphing, and then the second method was using square roots. So this method is um, useful um, when you have quadratic equations that can't be solved using square roots, but um, it also has some limitations. So let's go through the PowerPoint presentation so you can see um, what you need to learn. So these are our notes. All right, hopefully you guys see this. Um, we're solving quadratic equations by factoring. So if you have a quadratic equation that's in standard form, and um, you can see pretty quickly that it can be factored or without too much effort can be factored, then that's the method that you want to use because it is quite quick. Um, compared to other methods. So we have these three kinds of equations in standard form. This is where you have all three terms on one side and a number on the other side. Here you've just got the two terms, the squared term and the x term, and here you just have the squared term. In all three cases, they're quadratics, but they're um, missing pieces or, you know, they're complete. Different versions of the standard form. As always, the A, the B, the C, and also in this case, the Y are actually numbers in the equations that you will see. Also, this last equation here is um, a particular kind of equation in standard form that we looked at previously when we were looking at solving quadratic equations by um, taking square roots. This last one can be done with square roots, certainly, um, and that might be the best route to take depending on what your numbers are. It can also be done by factoring if this is easily factorable. All right, so let's go to the examples where you can see specific cases, specific numbers. Here are eight examples, and we're going to go through each one of them in this video. You see that they're all in standard form, although the terms are kind of all over the place. Sometimes they're all on one side, sometimes they're, they're scattered around the equal sign. Hopefully you had a chance to practice factoring trinomials and binomials um, because you're gonna need to be really good at that to, to be proficient in this method. The steps for solving quadratic equations by factoring are to first set the equation equal to zero. This is the case for most uh, quadratic equations when you're trying to solve them. Uh, you wanna set it equal to zero. This was true of the graphing method. It's true of factoring and it's true of the other um, the next method that we're going to learn. All right, so to set the equation equal to zero, you want to get all of the terms to one side so that you have a zero on the other side. And then you're going to factor the quadratic side, and you're going to set each factor equal to zero, and I will explain why this you do this step in a minute. And then you're going to solve each of the little equations that you set to equal to zero in step three. All right, so let's go back uh, to the examples, but I'm gonna do them under the document camera. Okay, so example number one, let's first of all set up your paper. I do want you to take out a piece of paper and work through these notes with me and not just watch this video. It You will learn more if you actually take a pen or a pencil in your hand and work through the problems with me. There, it's been proven that there's some sort of connection between your brain and your hand that actually working out the problems does help you learn them. So this is uh, solving quadratic equations. I'm going to abbreviate that by factoring. So if you haven't yet gotten out a piece of paper, go ahead and do that now and pause this video. Question one. Question one was x squared minus 11x plus 24 equals zero. So in the steps for solving quadratic equations, we get it equal to zero. This one is already done for us. And so we're going to factor the quadratic. This is a trinomial. So the way we would try to factor this is with the double parentheses so that we would get two binomials. All right, we wanna look at the first term, and we want to look at the last term in particular when we're trying to figure out what the numbers are here and here. 
x squared gets factored as x and x. We want to think of two numbers that multiply to give us 24, but add to give us 11. Well, basically, it's a negative 11. The only way we're going to get a negative 11 here by multiplying, um, by adding two numbers, and that those two numbers have to also multiply to give me a positive number, is if both of these are negative. So I want to think of two numbers that multiply to give me 24, but would add to give me 11. So 6 and 4 comes to mind, but that's not going to add to 11. Um, 24 and 1, 2 and 12. Um, so the factors that actually work are 8 and 3. 8 and 3. Multiply to give us 24, but also add to give us 11. And when I put a negative in front of each one, it gives me a negative 11 here, and it gives me a positive 24 here. All right, so then the next step, the third step, is to set each one of these factors equal to 0. So I go ahead and do that. I say 8 or x minus 8 equals 0, and I say x minus 3 equals 0. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because basically I have two numbers. This represents a number. If I knew what x was as a number, then I would have this as a value. And if I knew the same thing, x as a number, this would also work out to be a number. So I've got two numbers here that are multiplying together to give me 0. Um, there's a rule that says, and you should probably think about this yourself, if you're multiplying two numbers together and you get 0, then one of those numbers has to be 0. So if a times b equals 0, then, let's put a little if here, then a equals 0, or b equals 0, or both of them equal 0. So that's the zero product rule. So in order for these two numbers to multiply together to get a 0, then one of them has to be 0. So we say this one or this one. You can put a little or there, but you don't have to. It's fine if you leave that part off. And then the last step is to solve each of these little equations for x. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides here. I'm going to add 3 to both sides here. OK, those are my answers. Now, if you were to graph this, and you guys can check this on Desmos, if you were to put this piece in the graphing calculator and look for the zeros uh, or the x-intercepts, then the x-intercepts would be at 3 and 8. And what you would see is a little graph, or you'd have uh, your 3 here, you'd have your 8 somewhere down here. This is a parabola that's going to open up. It's going to have a y-intercept way up there at 24. It's going to come down here, and, and it's going to go back up. So it's going to look something like this. So you can check on Desmos and verify that if you're not sure. Let's go on to number two. Number two says b squared plus 5b equals 0. Now, it doesn't, you don't have to always use x, of course, so we're switching up the variables a little bit. Uh, and also, this is different because it doesn't have three terms. It's not a trinomial like the first example was. When it's just a binomial like this, two terms, then you can't factor it like we did up there. But you can look for a common factor. Do you see that um, this has a common factor of b? Both of these terms have a b in them. So then I factor it like this. And I have to figure out, what do I multiply b by to get b squared? Well, that'd be another b. And what do I multiply b by to get 5b? That would be 5. And so you can check. b times b would be b squared. b times 5 would be 5b. And um, that also equals 0. So I have my two factors. And I set each one equal to 0. So this one's already done. There's nothing I need to undo to get it by itself. That one's already un, um, solved. And then this one, I just need to subtract 5 from both sides and I get b equals 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Okay. All right, I'm going to go over here to um, put example number 3. It is x squared plus 5x equals negative 4. So in this example, it's not set equal to 0 already for us, so we have to do that step first. In order to get this uh, to be equal to 0, I want to get all the terms to the same side. 
And I'm just going to move this one over here. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And so I get x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. It's a good idea to put them in standard form and descending order of degree so that it's easier to factor. This is a quadratic trinomial, so I'm going to try and figure out what two binomials are its factors. Again, like we did in number one, we're going to break apart the x squared. It goes x and x. And then I have to think of two numbers that multiply to give me 4, but add to give me 5. So maybe you can think of these right off the top of your head. It would be 4 and 1. OK, I want you to pause the video and see if you can finish up this problem. What would you do next? What would be the next steps? OK, if you did this correctly, you should have thought um, x plus 4 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. And then we subtract 4 from both sides. And we subtract 1 from both sides. And I get x equals negative 4 or x equals negative 1. Looks like a lot of our examples are positives or negative um, integers, so that's fine. That's what it's going to work out. Um, most of these examples will be either fractions or integers because they can be factored, and so you'll get some pretty nice numbers. As we'll see later on when we get into some harder problems than you that can't be factored, then that means you'll usually get messier numbers. Okay, so that was example three. Let's go on and do example four down here. Kind of similar, k squared equals 11k minus 28. So again, we want to get everything to one side um, so that it equals zero. Now you may be tempted here to move the k squared to the other side by subtracting k from both sides, but I wouldn't recommend that because that introduces a negative k squared. You're going to get a negative k squared over here if you do that. And having a negative number in your um, leading coefficient is harder to, to factor. So I would recommend actually getting both of these terms over to this side because it will make factoring easier. I'm going to subtract 11k from both sides. And I'm going to add 28 to both sides. And so what I end up with when I simplify and range my terms is k squared minus 11k plus 28 equals 0. So think about that, what we just did. All right? I got everything that was on this side over to this side. I subtracted the 11k. I added 28 so that I have 0 on the right-hand side. Pause this video at this moment and see if you can factor this quadratic equation. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can factor it. Check your answers. So I'm going to factor k squared. It would be k and k. And I want to think of two numbers that multiply to give me 28, but add to give me a negative 11. So just like in example number one, if we have two numbers that are multiplying to give us a positive number, um, then they're going to add to give us a negative number. Both of these have to be negative in order for us to get um, a positive number when we multiply them, but a negative number when we add them. So can you think of two numbers that multiply to give us 28, but add to give 11? So that would be 7 and 4. Good job if you got that right. And then we set each one of these equal to 0. And you can add 7 to both sides. You can do this in your head. Um, add 4 to both sides. You get these two answers, 7 and 4. All right, um, let's try. I'm going to turn the page over because the next few examples are a little bit harder, at least 7 and, uh, sorry, 5 and 6 are harder. 5 is 7r squared, or is it x squared? I can't remember. Um, I think it might be x, but it's OK if you have a different variable. <laughs> it's OK. Um, we're going to solve this for the variable, whatever is in the equation. And we're all going to solve them the same way. So the first step is to get it equal to 0. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. And I have 7r squared minus 14r plus 7 equals 0. 
Okay, let's see if we can figure out how to factor this. This one's a little bit trickier because it has a coefficient in front of the um, R squared term, in front of our squared term, that's not one. And so we can't probably just guess and check. You might be able to guess and check. We do want to figure out um, what goes in here, but now we have to figure out what two numbers multiply to give us 49, but are going to add to give us negative 14. So if you can't figure that out, there's that other method we learned, the x method. So we take these two numbers, 7 times 7, that's our, our multiplying number, goes here, 49. And then our adding number here, or subtracting number here, the middle number goes there. So I want to think of what two numbers multiply to give me um, 49 but add to give 14, negative 14. So I know they have to both be negative, and I can think right now, negative seven and negative seven would multiply to give me 49 and would add to give me negative 14. And so the next step is to rewrite this, because this is not just gonna be x minus seven or r minus seven and r minus seven. That won't work. That won't give us the seven r squared in the front. So we have to rewrite this. I'm going to write 7r squared. In place of negative 14r, I'm going to write negative 7r minus 7r. That's equal to the negative 14r here. And then I'm going to add the plus 7. So what I'm doing is replacing this middle term with these two terms right here. Because now I'm going to factor by grouping. I'm going to group these two together, and I'm going to group these two together. And I'm going to factor common factors from this pair common is 7 and r. And so when I factor out a 7 and an r, I get r minus 1. Over here, I want to also factor um, a 7r, but I think I want to factor a negative 7r. And I get, oh, not, not r, negative 7, just not r. So negative 7, and then if I factor that out, that leaves me with an r. If I factor out a negative 7 from a positive 7, then my remaining factor would have to be r minus 1. So you see r minus 1 and r minus 1 are common. That happens usually when we're factoring by grouping, if it can be factored. So I'm going to write r minus 1 as that common factor that I see here. And what's left when I bring that out is what's left here, the 7r and the minus 7. So those are my two factors, 7. Oh, I re re rearranged them, and that's okay. Doesn't matter what order you put them in, because multiplication, which I'm doing here, this times this, is commutative. So it could be this times this, or it could be this times this. Okay, so let's just double check that this is correct. If I multiply 7r times r, I do get 7r squared. If I multiply 7r times negative 1, I get negative 7r. If I multiply this negative 7 times r, I get negative 7r. And that does add to negative 14r. And then the last two, negative 7 times negative 1 is a positive 7. So I've checked it. The factors are correct. And now what I want to do is rewrite each factor down here, setting it equal to 0, and then solving. So this one's a little bit harder to solve. I need to add 7, 7r equals 7, divide by 7, r equals 1. So that's one answer. And the other answer over here, add 1, r equals 1. Well, look, I've got the same answer. So do you remember um, when we did quadratics by graphing, and we also saw this with the uh, square root problems, that sometimes there's only one answer. And what does that mean? That means you've got some kind of a quadratic whose vertex is going to sit right on that x-axis and give us only one, um, one zero. There's only one value. When you have a quadratic equation that only gives you one value, that means that the vertex must be on the x-axis. Okay, let's take a look at number six. It's kind of a similar problem. We have eight x squared equals 30 plus 43 x. Okay, another one of these problems where our coefficient in front of our squared term is not one. So this does make it harder. We do have to use this as x method to try and figure it out. First step, however, is to get everything to the same side. So like before, I'm going to subtract 43x, and I'm going to subtract 30, 
and I'm going to rearrange the term so I get 8x squared minus 43x minus 30 equals 0. Okay, now I have to figure out how to factor this. Okay, let's see. I'm going to make an x, and I'm going to multiply the first and the last. So 8 times negative 30 is negative 240, and then the number in the middle is negative 43. So I cannot think off the top of my head what two numbers multiply to give me a negative 240 and add to give me uh, or subtract to give me a negative 43. I do know, however, that because I'm multiplying two numbers and I'm getting a negative answer, one of these numbers has to be negative and one of these numbers has to be positive. And when I figure them out, I'm going to be, because the signs are different, I'm going to be subtracting those two numbers to get 43. So I want to figure out what two numbers multiply to give me 240, but subtract to give me 43. So I can't think of this. So I'm going to break this apart. I do know that 240 is 8 times 30, because that's what I multiplied together over here to get it. So um, that's 4 and 2. That's 5 and 6. 2 is prime. 5 is prime. 4 can be broken down to and two, six can be broken down, two and three. So I wanna play with these leaves, these circled prime factors in different combinations to figure out two numbers that multiply to give me 240, but would subtract to give me a negative 43. Well, let's see, um, two times two times two is eight, times five is 40. And then this one, these two factors would be six, but if I subtract them, that's not going to give me 43. If I did 40 times two, that's 80, and that leaves me with three, that's too much. So let's keep playing around here. Um, 15, 60, and eight, no, nope, that's not right. Let's see here, if I did two times two, times two, that's eight again. Eight times two is 16. 16 times two is 48. Ah, okay, so I have 48 if I do these five at the very end, and that leaves me with the five, 48 and five. So I know 48 and five, these go together to make 48 and that five are gonna to multiply to give me 240. And I also can see that if I subtract them, I would get 43. I want the bigger number to be negative because it's gotta end up with a negative 43 and I want the smaller number to be positive. So I'm gonna put 48 here and five here and those are my two factors. All right, so now I'm going to rewrite this as eight X squared Instead of negative 43, I'm going to write negative 48x plus 5x and then minus 30. I want to group these into pairs. So remember how we did this a long time ago and hopefully you practice some um, with your IXL. Okay, here we have 8x squared minus 48x. What's common to those two? Well, I can see x is common. I think eight is also common, eight goes into 48. So eight X leaves me with X minus six. Is that right? Yep. And then over here I have five, I can see five is common, positive five leaves me with X minus six. Okay, X minus six is common, X minus six I bring down and that leaves me with eight X plus five. So those are my two factors, X minus six and eight X plus five. You can double check x times 8x is 8x squared. I have that um, positive 5x minus 48x gives me that and negative six and a positive five gives me the negative 30. Always check that you're right before you go on because there's no sense in um, writing down factors that aren't working for you. Set each factor equal to zero and solve. So this one I'm going to add six to both sides. I get x equals six, and this one I'm gonna subtract five, divide by eight. Okay, so I have a fraction and this other um, whole number. 
All right, we're almost done. Let's try their last two examples. Number seven is 2k squared minus 14 equals negative 3k. I'd like you to pause the video at this moment and see if you can work through this and see how far you get, okay? All right, so the first step is to get everything to one side. I'm gonna add 3k to both sides. So I get 2k squared plus 3k minus 14. I'm putting it all in order um, and as in standard form so that I can factor it. I'm gonna figure out how to factor this. Okay, again, I have a, a number here that's not uh, one, so I'm gonna use the X method. Two times negative 14. I have to multiply two times, the first times the last. So two times negative 14 is negative 28. And I want it to add to three. So I have to think of two numbers that multiply to give me negative 28, but add to give me three. One's negative, one's positive. I know that in order to get a negative number up there by multiplying, I know that signs have to be different. So I have to think of two numbers that multiply to give me 28, but add to give me three. So let's go through the same process. Four, seven, two, two. Oh, four and seven, right. <laughs> um, four and seven work. If I make seven negative, nope. If I make seven positive and the four negative, then when I multiply them, I get negative 28. And when I add them, I get a positive three. And so those are my two factors. So I rewrite um, this piece here, 2k squared. Instead of plus 3k, I'm going to write minus 4k uh, plus 7k minus 14. I'm going to factor by grouping. OK, so look at those two. See if you can factor by grouping. What's common to the first pair? It looks like it's 2k. When I factor out a 2k, I have k minus 2 left over. Over here, what's common? 7, 7. And when I factor that out, I have k minus 2 left over. Over here, I have k minus 2 because that's common. Those binomials are common to both of those. So I'm going to factor that out. And that leaves me with 2k plus 7. So those are my two factors. I bring them back over here, k minus 2 and 2k plus 7 set them equal to zero. And then this one, I'm going to just get two. This one, I have to subtract seven and divide by two. And when I do that, I'm going to get a negative seven halves or a negative 3.5. OK, so we have one more example. Last problem is that third uh, case where you have just the square term. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, I can solve this with square roots, definitely. Square roots is the method that we learned last week. So let's just review. The square root method would be to get everything to one side. So I'm going to add 75. divide by three, and then at this point, take the square root of both sides. So I get n equals plus or minus five. All right, let's see if we get the same thing when I um, do square roots here, uh, do factoring here. So factoring tells me I can first factor out what's common. Three is common. So when I factor out three, I have n squared minus 25 equals zero. Well, this right here, is the difference of two squares. So that can be factored. I don't know if you remember that. But I want to think of two numbers that multiply to give me a negative 25, but add to give me 0. That middle term drops out when there's only these um, two squares here. So 1 is minus 5, and 1 is plus 5. Do you remember that, where these binomials are exactly the same, except the signs are different? And so um, I can divide out through by 3. I just want to write these two factors equal to 0.
and I get n equals positive 5 and n equals negative 5. All right, whichever method when you have this situation uh, you prefer to use is fine. They're basically the same. All right, so that is our um, lecture. Uh, you do have some problems to work on in the assignment. The assignment includes answers so that you can check as you go along, but I do need to see the steps of factoring and all that. All right, good luck, and I will talk to you guys later.